It is finally that time. Miss Universe is here. We have been waiting patiently for so long and now we get to dive right in onto the preliminary competition. Hello, welcome. And if you are new here, my name is Susie Greenberg and I am a former pageant title holder. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it has been a while. Um, I had all of this intention to make all of this universe content leading up to the competition. Um, but then in the United States where I am at, we had Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and I was entertaining for all of it. And on top of all of that, um, I am a full-time working mom and um, I've also decided to start up school again and I'm taking all these high level uh, classes because I decided to get another degree. So <laughs> I have my plate so full that I just couldn't possibly add more, but I had to make videos for the preliminary and finals. That was a absolute must. Like universe is like the Super Bowl of pageantry. So I was so excited to take a break from studying and watch the preliminaries. So um, let's just dive in on some of the reactions and comments of how I felt that this preliminary went. First off, the pageant is being hosted in my home country, the USA, in um, New Orleans, Louisiana, New Orleans. And um, I was really excited to leading up to see how New Orleans did the pageant. Um, I'm not gonna have my full conclusion until after finals, but I just know that as a state, Louisiana is really, really good at putting on pageantry. Whenever they've hosted the Miss USA pageant, they've always done a fantastic job. And plus, it's like it, it's New Orleans. They host Mardi Gras every year. They're no stranger to putting on like pomp and circumstance. And I just thought they were going to do a really great job. Um, I wasn't super impressed so far, but I just watched preliminaries. A lot of times they bring out the big bucks for finals. So um, one thing about specifically the stage. So I looked it up because I was actually looking at buying tickets to go. Um, they are um, having the preliminaries and finals on the same stage in the same building. I did think that the stage was really small, like space wise. Um, I did also notice, I was like, oh no, they don't have no runway. We need a runway. And there is a runway. If you paid attention, there was a runway, but they didn't utilize it during preliminaries. And actually, that's pretty a smart move because you've got so many girls that you can't have them do a full-fledged routine for like 70, 80 girls. That's just is so long. Um, so they just had a kind of them did like an express version where they just kind of did a little, um, kind of little shoehorn. Um, in their staging, but I really, really hope for the choreography for finals, they'll have them do the full-fledged stop, pose, pose, walk the runway, pose, come back, you know, do the full routine. That will make me much happier, It'll be much easier to judge finals if I get that full routine. I really liked the production side of the pageant this year. Not necessarily um, from the stage, but more of like the B-roll film, um, the transition film that they had. Um, I really liked how they were kind of using some of the messaging with it. Um, I do love a good show. I mean, I mean, I know all that some people don't like all that fluff, but I think that kind of elevates the show, having all those really great visuals. And all of the videography that they had seemed to be elevated at a level that I would expect something like Miss Universe to have. 
I also wanted to address um, in between swimwear and evening gown, they had um, the each of the contestants say, I believe women have the right to choose and whatever they believe, whatever their statement was. And some said, you know, to education, to, and then um, they used all of that and went into the new rule of how um, women are now, who compete are now allowed to either be married, divorced, and have children. Um, so you don't have to have them, you can have them, and I know this is a whole new topic to talk about, which I'm not going to spend too much time on that in this video, but um, they basically kind of addressed it with saying, we believe women have the right to choose what they want and their destinies in their life, and so we support all women with the right to choose. And I thought that was a really good way to... Um, kind of address it because I was really interested um, how they're going to do it. And they also had one other girl. She was saying, I know a lot of people are going to doubt this, but like women are so good at like overcoming and like making things work. And they had a lot of other girls comment on it and who seemed very supportive of it. Um, so I thought that was a really good um, transition, like how they planned it out. Whoever wrote all the PR stuff, did a good job with it. Now getting into the actual show, one thing I wanted to say is I love the opening number outfits. I don't know if they're gonna have like different ones for finals, but I love them. They were so good. Opening number outfits are always awful. And these ones were so cute. I loved them. If I had one of those outfits, I would wear it like over and over again. I loved it like and that was such a good like um moment for like a sponsorship like I'm totally going on that website and like looking for, for these because those are the cutest dresses they're totally pageant worthy of it they got the glitz the glam and I, I absolutely loved them I'm so jealous of those opening number outfits also in wardrobe they had these capes that they all wore however they were allowed to design them and color on them like I guess you could say and kind of create whatever art they wanted on them um so a lot of them did their philanthropy or some other um thing that was very important to them um that I don't know if they're gonna have those also in finals I'm assuming not I'm assuming those are just preliminary uh, but that was something kind of cute to kind of do um, for each of the girls. However, <laughs> the theme of the capes was children's handprints. Oh my gosh, if I saw another children's handprint on that darn cape, I was just going to be like, we're done. We're done here. It was most overdone cliche thing throughout it. Like it's going to be the joke of this pageant is the handprints. I can already see it. So I do have my top 20 list and we're finally going to get to it now that I've gotten through all of some of my other commentary. Um, but um, in no particular order, we have for my top 20 is Mexico, Puerto Rico, Philippines, Bolivia, Chile, Thailand, Colombia, Costa Rica, Curaçao, the USA, Venezuela, Vietnam, Peru, Aruba, Australia, Dominican Republic, Indonesia, Jamaica, France, and India. Um, there were a few others that I did really like and of course like when it gets that final cream that those last final like you know five at the end um trying to fit them all in it's your um I always I'll have to re-watch some of the footage again and kind of figure out who am I putting in and who I'm dropping and I usually my criteria this time is okay how are they going to perform against people who I know did really, really well? Um, do they have a chance in this competition? 
Um, so some of these, um, some of the girls I didn't put on my list, um, it wasn't because I didn't necessarily think they were good. It's just that from what I saw in preliminaries, I didn't think that it was strong enough of a performance that was going to push them into finals. So we will see. So whenever I'm scoring my girls, I'm always really careful not to let my personal biases of them as an individual or my loyalties to their country affect my scoring. Um, I try to be as bipartisan and as possible. But this time I didn't have to worry about that because my girl, USA Arbany, did so freaking good. Oh my gosh, I was so happy for her. She slayed it and oh my god girl you've been hitting the gym like she looked fantastic at usa but wow like i didn't get the full body shot like because it was a really quick prelim but wow girl good job you gotta give me your trainer's number you know if i go back to texas I, I gotta get an appointment with them because you look good. <laughs> Going over a few other girls that I starred who are like my tippy top favorites and one of them is Mexico. Mexico. Mm. She, she, what are, what are you doing over there? Cause you won not that long ago and now you potentially bring in another queen in. Like, is Mexico becoming a power country? Maybe. That would be awesome for them as a country to have another Mexican universe queen. So we'll see, but yeah, um, look out. Puerto Rico. Like, Puerto, Puerto Rico is becoming, like, one of my new favorite pageant countries. I mean, they are consistently putting out such good contestants, no matter what pageant it is. They're usually always phenomenal. And, like, I totally understand why Puerto Rico doesn't want to be involved with the USA. They want their own thing because they're putting out such good contestants. Um, and there actually are, I know some girls who are, um, who have, um, who are U.S. citizens, because you, in Puerto Rico, you are a U.S. citizen, um, but who are able to kind of, um, who, you know, her families are from Puerto Rico or have, and they'll move to Puerto Rico so that they can compete in Miss Puerto Rico. Um, and I totally understand it because... They're such a joy to watch. I love watching their national pageant and she, she does great. Venezuela, I mean, no surprise there, Venezuela, right? But I did wanna say I was really, really proud of Miss Venezuela this year um, because Venezuela always puts out a very good girl, like without a doubt. But they're known and have the stereotype of being very stiff. They almost overtrain their girls and they don't really teach them to have fun and relax. And Miss Venezuela this year, she seems much more comfortable, much happier, much less plastic. And I was really excited for that. So I could see her going up and getting a higher placement um, just because she's able to act more natural and compete with other countries that um, train their girls to be both technical and personable. Philippines, of course, is on my list, but um, I didn't necessarily see that spark that I usually get from my um, uh, Filipina queens. Um, maybe I'll get that in finals, um, but if I get the same performance in finals that I saw in prelims, I see her making it in finals, but I don't see her winning. I'm just saying I don't She's very, very cute and I like her, but you need to be able to talk to my soul to win Miss Universe. Like that, that is the goal. And I didn't see that in her. So with Columbia, I don't get the same je ne sais quoi from her that I got from some other girls. But one thing I love about Columbia is her confidence. 
oh my goodness, she gets the confidence word of the night. Like in her introduction, in her swimwear, and her evening gown, she just comes out like, this is who I am. And that super duper confidence is just immediately elevates her to the top. Um, and I would just love for her in finals to really ch bring out the charm. Because she's got the confidence thing, of course, down pat. But have that extra charm to make my, you know, make me giggle in my seat. Like, that's what she needs. Thailand is a diva. Oh, my goodness. Like, I had such high hopes for her because I know that the Thailand... Um, the the Th Miss Thai Universe pageant was phenomenal this last year, so I, I yeah, she is definitely in top five. Um, she's got it all. She's got the looks, the technique, the charm. Thailand could bring it home. I'm very serious. And I would be perfectly okay with that. <laughs> Vietnam, another girl who just came out and slayed me. I was just, her, like her abs, like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> her abs looked fantastic. And she had all this like charm and sass, but it wasn't overdone. Because you, sometimes you can go get a little too sassy. And it was just... I'm like, I'm having a hard time because everyone's so, they're, they're, these, these girls are so good. <laughs> An overall arching theme that I saw in this pageant is that a lot of girls kind of looked a bit soulless. Um, and it wasn't just one girl, it was all the girls. Like even the girls who I thought did really, really well, I felt like something was missing. I'm not sure if maybe they were just tired because the um, first part of the competition started at, in their time in New Orleans at 7 p.m. And I saw from when I was looking at the tickets, they had a dress rehearsal earlier that day at like 11 or something they had to run through the whole thing so they basically had to compete twice like in one day um that looked like a really tiring schedule plus not only do they have um the preliminary competition but then they also have the costume competition afterwards so i think the girls might have just been some of the girls i think might have just been really tired and their lack of luster um might have just been from lack of sleep <laughs> and them just being kind of burnt out which unfortunately that is a price that you kind of have to pay like being in a pageant is an test of endurance and it's similar to tennis sometimes like or other sports like that where it's when you're at that level of echelon sometimes it's not about who's the best it's about who who's the best under pressure and under a very scrutinizing schedule and I, I feel like I saw it tonight. Um, hopefully these girls get a lot of rest before finals and really, really give it their 100%. Um, but this is something I picked up on. Um, I'm curious if anybody else saw that. Wrapping things up, um, I just feel that for these girls, the girls who did really well just really, really shone. And so I'm giving my... I'm even going, bringing it down from a top 20 to probably to a top six. Like these are my girls who I think did absolutely amazing and that I would really love to see in a top five spot. They get the gold stars of the night. And that is Thailand, USA, Venezuela, Vietnam, Mexico, and Puerto Rico. I am rooting for all of you girls and I am so excited for this weekend to see you shine. With that, oh, what did you think of this preliminary competition? Um, were some of the girls performed at the level that you wanted them? 
Um, were you disappointed in some people? Um, what did you think of the production, the stage? How do we know about finals? I don't know. Finals kind of feels like a big mystery to me right now. Um, there's a lot of things I'm really hoping and praying for, but we'll see if they come true. So I really want to hear everybody's predictions and um, what they're excited for. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you at finals. Bye for now.